Hi team, today we're looking at differences in learning and quality of feedback relating to motor skill learning. This is going to be a pretty brief uh, presentation, um, so it should only be sort of five, six minutes, um, and hopefully I sound a little bit more enthusiastic so you're not falling asleep at your computers. Alright, let's get started. Many factors affect how well a skill is learned. Individual differences can affect the learner's ability to acquire and develop skills. Being able to identify differences between individuals can allow a coach to tailor a skill learning program to specifically target a person's need. Age of maturity affects the physical and mental ability to perform skills. What shape is the learner? Are they short, stocky, rounded? What recreational or competitive sports have they participated in? How much coordination, balance or concentration have they demonstrated so far? Are they enthusiastic and open to new experiences and ideas? What are their strength and endurance levels like? How do they learn best? Are they kinesthetic, verbal or visual learners? What cultural or socio-economic circumstances could affect the learner? All of these factors need to be considered when planning a skill learning program. Feedback should motivate and help a person improve their performance and can be given in a number of different ways. Feedback will vary according to the stage of learning and situation a person is in. Some research suggests that feedback about the actual movement is more powerful intervention than outcome information. Pause the video now and see if you can recall what the terms are we give for feedback about the actual movement versus feedback that provides outcome information. The two main types of feedback are internal and external feedback. Internal feedback is information received through the body's senses such as vision, hearing and touch. It also refers to proprioceptive and kinesthetic awareness, which is the ability to sense the position, location, orientation and movement of the body and its parts in space. External feedback refers to the information received through external sources. This could include hearing advice from others such as coaches, teammates or parents, or looking at video footage or diagrams. Several principles need to be remembered when giving or receiving feedback, such as knowledge of sports psychology or a person's personality and learning style, as these factors determine how people react to correction or their need for positive reinforcement. Feedback can be categorised into spice factors. Sensation. Feedback can be received through a variety of sources. Precision. Feedback should contain specific information about the performance. Immediacy. Feedback may be given as soon as a performance is over. Constructiveness. Feedback needs to contain ways of improving performance. And finally, encouragement and motivation. Feedback includes praise and direction towards goals. So it reinforces correct actions and motivates. Being able to consider SPICE factors when providing feedback allows you to provide the best feedback possible to a skill learner. So that's it, just a quick presentation today which should make you all happy because this weekend is looking pretty nice outside. Take some good notes though and questions as we'll be focusing on these concepts come Monday afternoon. Have a good one.